Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, welcome to the very first model build video that we are using our new camera equipment and microphones. I want to give you guys the, the best audio and video experience possible. So the first thing you're going to notice on our new videos is they're all going to be filmed in 4K. And that is really going to help out, especially because some of the new kits are so full of detail and just some incredible, incredible stuff. The 4K is going to really let you get in there and see how nice everything is. Plus, I know a lot of you guys watch us on the big screen TVs, which a lot of you guys have 4K TVs, so you'll be able to go ahead and watch those in the full 4K. The very first model we're going to build using 4K is actually going to make the 4K come in handy, and it is a, a fairly new kit, just came out within the last month or two, from Ammo by MIG. It is their 70 second scale T-54B Russian battle tank. And 70 second scale, yes, so it's a real tiny one. And I was looking over the sprues, and it's a beautiful kit inside. In fact, I'll show you the sprues at the beginning of the video uh, before we get into the actual build to show you what I'm talking about. But there's link and link tracks inside of it, photo etch, all kinds of just great parts. And from what I've heard too, it, the fit is very, very good on this. So I'm very excited about building this one. Also, at the end of the video, we're going to mention a little bit more, but coming up next month, August 17th on a Saturday in northern Germany in the town of Delmenhurst, I will be appearing at Summerfest. And Summerfest is a company, Model Bob Koenig's big open house. Yeah, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. I hope to see all of you that can make it up in uh, northern Europe, or actually any part of Europe for that matter. It's probably not that far away for you guys, uh, but very excited. I'm going to put a link down below that you can go to Model Bob Koenig's website. They'll have more information about it, but very excited. I want to meet as many of you as possible. I'm really excited about getting over there. So, let's get started. Okay, since this is a new kit, what I thought I would do is just take a couple of uh, seconds here and show you the breakdown of the sprues and then a little bit of some of the other accessory parts that come inside of it. And lastly, I, what I thought I would do is let you guys take a look at the instruction booklet. And the reason I'm showing you this is for such a simple kit with not too many parts, there's actually a very extensive instruction booklet included. And inside the booklet, there are lots of shots of the actual tanks that you can see for weathering, pictures like that. Then there's a complete step-by-step -step instructions of doing all of the different steps. Very, very thorough on it. And then finally, when you get to the end of the instructions, a little bit further back here, there are painting tips and weathering recommendations and how to put on decals and quite a few different types of uh, paint schemes on here as well. So it keeps going and going and going here. So a very, very interesting kit. I believe Tacom is actually doing the molding for Ammo by MIG. So if you guys are familiar with Tacom's quality, you know that this is an excellent kit. Okay, to start off, we're going to work on the lower hull first. And as you can see, it is a bathtub style hull. Really nicely detailed, and most of the suspension parts are molded right in to the actual piece. Now, you'll also notice too, we're going to work on the road wheels here. And I've cut them off the sprue, but you'll notice that I haven't separated all four road wheels. And that is because you'll notice that there is a little little pin mark right there on each one of them there, or a little notch I should say, and it's easy to get them to all line up perfectly all in a row 
just by putting a little bit of glue on them there and then they all fall right into the corresponding notch on the other side because that's the way they're molded and then once they dry like this set has we can do a little sanding get all of the marks out of them all at once and then just of course cut the actual piece right here just with our sprue cutters and kind of speed up the process even a little bit further just like that and then just have to file on it okay the very front road wheel is different than the ones that we've just all cut out and sanded and they are on a separate spot on the sprue here but we're gonna leave those on the sprue until we get all of the other road wheels on the vehicle and that'll just prevent us from accidentally mixing the two up because they're very very close in the way they look and you can see these are all just gonna go right into place very quickly and easily and then I will cut the other two road wheels off and glue those up and then we will put those into place as well like that and once we get all of the road wheels glued on I've taken a little piece of straight sprue here that I've just pushed inside each one of the grooves between the double road wheels and we're gonna let it dry that way that way we know all the wheels line up perfectly so when we go put the tracks on we won't have any crazy wavy wheels okay for the track assembly you can see that there are link and length tracks so here are the long links of tracks and here are the individual links this is a operation that I'm going to highly recommend that you get a pair of some kind of really fine sprue cutters. In this particular case, I'm using the Tamiya Ultra Thin One 78123. They're a newer sprue cutter and they are like razors and you can see how narrow. So we can get inside without damaging and just that easy cut that side of the track off and go down the line. Because uh, if not, if you've got some of the bigger sprue cutters, especially getting in some of these tighter areas and the plastic is so thin, you'll end up cracking it. So I'm going to get all these pieces cut off and then we have a guide that we're going to use and we're going to actually just glue the tracks into place and wrap them around the guide, leaving an opening on the back here so we can slide them off and then we'll be able to paint them separately and then attach them to the vehicle later on. Okay, I've got a bunch of the individual tracks glued together right in through here, and then this is a link, and this is a length, and this little end right here is a length also. Now, there, on the jig, you'll put the, uh, the drive sprocket up front, and there are two little teeth guides up front here that will lock it in. That way you keep the teeth proper, and then the same thing with the uh, idler wheel. There is a little pin in there to hold it in the proper place, too, so that way none of this stuff is moving around on you. Now as we go down the line and start gluing these together, I've glued them onto a piece of tape because this way the, the glue doesn't want to interact with the tape at all so you're not going to be gluing your tracks down. And then every once in a while you want to just take something straight like this and kind of move it around. That way none of the softened plastic starts to stick anywhere. Now I've put a couple of coats of glue on this and we're going to let this set up for probably about five, six minutes. Then we're going to come back and we're going to wrap it right around this front drive sprocket here. Keeping in mind, too, that we got to keep the tracks in the right direction. So I had to look at the front of the cover of the box to find out which way the pattern of the track goes because the instructions aren't very clear on that. But once you figure that out, just make sure you keep them in the right order and that way your tracks will go on correctly. Okay, it's time to wrap around the tracks. As you can see right here also, too, I just noticed there are some teeth guides all around these and that is going to keep, keep the teeth lined up properly. Remember, don't glue this into place because you want to be able to tracks to come off. So we'll start to put this around here, get it to the spot where it starts to bend, and then lining up those teeth perfectly, stretching it, and you can see you get a nice perfect form on it. And we'll let that track set up in that position, maybe even put a little light clamp on it or something. But you can see inside here that those teeth on all the way around guide it so we're going to get a perfect fit on both sides of the track. Now I'm going to let this set up a little bit like I said and then we'll work on the rest of the piece and then the final piece you put on is the bottom and looking at the instructions that we put on after we attach it to the vehicle. And we have our first set of tracks done and I'll just show you how they fit into place here. We're not going to glue them in right now because we want to do the painting on them separately. 
So it's just a matter of lining up the front and back drive sprocket and idler. Go ahead and push that track down and then we can also glue the top down to make it look like it has a sag as well. So actually it wasn't very difficult at all. The only tough part of all is holding on to these tiny little track pieces but not too too bad. Now with that all done we can start gluing on more parts onto the upper part of the hull which we will start right now. There are a bunch of little parts all over the place that we need to put on including some photo etch and it's just a little bit more difficult working on these just because of the size. That's why 35th sometimes is a little bit nicer because it can get your big fingers around it, at least my big fingers around it. And there is some photo etch on here as well that will be pushed onto the back here. Actually, that is not the photo etch. That is the frame for the photo etch. This is the photo etch right here. And it's a uh, it's got some detail to it that that makes it look like uh, bolts that will go all around. So the whole ring will go around here. We'll glue that into place in a little while too. And then we have all of the other little accessories that are going to get dropped into place all over here. I think that goes right there like that. So what I'll do is I'm going to get them all cut up. And actually one other quick one I want to show you. This is how a lot of the little bins are built up. There's this long straight piece here. But you can bend it. And it's got bunch of little bends in it here. Probably easier to do it without tweezers. And we'll be able to glue it together and glue the top on. And you have one of your little stowage bins for the side there. And we'll glue those on. So that's how basic uh, stuff is. The other, Nothing super difficult. All just a bunch of little parts. So I'm going to get all of those glued on right now. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, you can see we've got all the little accessories glued onto the top of the vehicle. And now we are going to go and glue the upper and lower hulls together. And I already put a little bit of cement up front. We're going to run some down the inside here to make sure they stay nice and secure. Now you'll notice here too there's a little slot here as well as we're also missing the back of the vehicle because we haven't put that on yet. And what I'm going to advise to do is since we left the tracks off, I'm going to advise not to put the, uh, the rear flaps on yet just like this and because I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get, to get the tracks on. I think we'll have no problem with the rest of it just with these and these will be able to slide on at any time because it'll just slide right into the groove just like that and then we'll glue it into place. So we won't worry about that right now but we will go ahead and put the rear plate on just like that and then put all the accessories that are involved with the back end of the tank and you can see it's a, a really cool little vehicle and nicely scaled, I think, especially for this size because we're talking, put it next to a bottle of Tamiya glue. You can see it's not much bigger than a bottle of Tamiya glue. Really cool little vehicle. Okay, now we're attaching the, uh, the rear drum fuel tanks back here. And I wanted to do it in a way that I could leave this anti-ditching beam off, but the bracket goes all the way around the ditching beam and there's two pins inside there so I guess we're going to have to attach the well actually not have to I, I have actually attached it to the piece right there so we're gonna have to go around and paint that separately and according to the instructions they want you to build up the entire piece and then kind of put it on I found that it's easier to put some of the brackets on attach the drum and then attach all the parts around it and yeah, some of the parts are very 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 small and it's just a lot easier to kind of build them up especially when they're attached to this base here it makes them a lot stronger Okay, here is the uh, mostly completed lower hull. I've snapped the uh, the tracks into place just to give you guys an idea what it's going to look like scale-wise. We obviously have to glue all those down. We've attached the tow cables, the little uh, photo etch pieces for the grills here for the cover the headlights, and of course got all of the fuel tanks, all the wiring and things like that. And like I said, we have the uh, ditching anti-ditching beam in place here because there's no other way to put that on, and that's all ready to go. Now we can start working on the turret. And to start right off, the turret's got a lot of really tiny little parts to put on. Uh, these little toe or lifting hooks right here that we've already glued into place are all separate pieces. So those cutters are going to really come in handy on this. Now with that in place, we can go ahead and attach the uh, 
the cupola, which we've just glued the two parts together, and it has the option of either an open or closed cupola, and we've also attached the machine gun to it as well. Now there are a bunch of other little parts on here that we need to install, including things like the other side of this hatch, all these other, and a bunch of grab handles, things like that. So those are kind of tedious, and I kind of need to get close up to it, and not have the camera in the way. So I am going to pull away for a little while, get all those little parts glued into place. We'll come back show you what it looks like before we install the gun, though. Okay, we've got most of the little tiny parts glued into place on the uh, the turret. One uh, little piece of advice I might give you guys is when you go to grab it when you're handling it, grab it by the machine gun because I've bent multiple times all those little tiny grab handles right there. They're very, very tiny and very fragile. Now we need to put the, the little brace on the barrel here that is going to control the searchlight. Sliding that into place there. Making sure it's going on the right side. And snapping it in so it'll lock it into place. So now we're going to go ahead, glue the barrel into place, and then hopefully get the uh, searchlight to mount with the little mounting bracket right here. Some really, really tiny parts. Uh, I kind of need the camera out of the way to get that rest of that part done. I actually I can glue the barrel into place right now. That part will be easy, but uh, <laughs> this little searchlight I'm a little concerned about. But once I get that on, I'm actually done with principal construction other than I actually kind of forgot to do the other set of tracks. I have to do those first, but after I do that, I will be done with the kit. And uh, what I'll do is I'll get all the final pieces done and I'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's done. Okay, here is a look at the uh, completed construction on the model. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of detail that they've put into this vehicle. I've included a uh, United States quarter in front. If you guys are familiar with the size of that, you see how small this vehicle actually is. Now, I did put gray primer on the actual vehicle and some black primer on the tracks to get them ready to paint up, of course. And mainly put the gray primer on because there's like some little shiny spots from uh, gluing and things like that that actually just, it looks better on camera to have it all primed up. Now that we have that, I believe I'm going to probably do a Russian version of this tank, so... I'm going to now put a shadow coat on, and we're going to use Tamiya's XF69 NATO Black and our Tamiya Sprayworks HD3. It's a real fine, fine airbrush, because we just want to put a few little areas in here that are going to have the shadow. Okay, next we're going to paint the outer body color, and I am going to do a Russian vehicle. So we're going to use Mission Model Paints uh, Russian Dark Olive to paint the entire piece. Here is the paint all dry now. I've also gone ahead and sprayed one coat of Tamiya's Dull Coat or TS80 on it, the flat clear. One thing I'll point out to you too is here on the uh, the log in the back, I painted it up and it looked kind of kind of plain. So I went back and took a uh, the edge of an X-Acto knife and scratched long scratches into the log, then repainted it and then put a coat of Tamiya's bark panel liner on it, or brown panel liner on it, and also dry brushed it lightly with a little bit of a, a real light tan color, and especially on the edges of the log here where you can see where it's the actual cut wood, and I really think it makes it pop out now. There's some areas on there now that looks like a real tree log. Now that we have that done, we can go ahead 
and we've also put the uh, the tracks into place we're going to use a little dark brown wash we want to start highlighting some of the areas back here and especially these grates they look a little bit too too normal with the paint job on it so we're just using some wash now going over on them start filling in all of those and of course this wash is all flat wash so it'll dry much much uh, lighter than what it's turning out right there we're also going to use some of the panel liner brown from Tamiya to accentuate some of the uh, the details like some of the rivets and then of course some of the areas in here we will also use some of the brown panel liner and a few other colors of wash like the uh, the light rust wash from MIG since it's a MIG product we're going to use some of the MIG wash on it as well and the rust wash doesn't always have to come off looking like rust it can sometimes just come across looking like a, uh, a brown dirt so we'll put a little bit inside here and then we'll take a little enamel thinner and thin it out a little thinner on it there and that kind of spreads it all out now I'm not going to go too too crazy with the the weathering on that especially in this size and scale I think it can be overdone very very quickly and I'll just keep going back and forth putting different colors of weathering product on there and we'll come back and show you what it looks like once it dries Now we're going to use a little bit of sand and uh, sand yellow dust and dirt deposits and very very lightly we want to add a little bit of dirt effect and this is basically a pigment and wash mixed together that's been thinned down And lastly, we're taking some light sienna pigment powder mixed with a little enamel thinner, and we're just going to push it on all over the tracks here. And when this stuff dries, it's going to dry to a powder like consistency. And we'll show you what that's going to look like. Well, here we are. Here is our completed model and as you can see we've gone over it pretty well with the different weathering effects I also one thing I didn't show on there too but it took a fine sponge and put a few little scratches just real real fine ones on there being that the size of the vehicle is so tiny but we wanted to give it just a touch of wear and tear on it and then of course the the dirt effects building up in all the little creases always looks really well too and as you can see we've included a American quarter in front to give you guys an idea of size how small this vehicle really is but real close up with the 4k you should really see the detail that is involved in this kit now overall the kit went together real well it was actually like I said only five sprues the tracks are a little fiddly they're not difficult they're just so tiny to handle uh, that took a little bit more time than I thought but nothing nothing terrible at all but I think you get a really good quality track on there too and the idea that you have a guide that you can build them on and then gradually take them off and then apply it to the vehicle is so wonderful it would have been a lot more difficult trying to assemble those on the kit so very very nice that they included that plus there was also a few other uh, pieces of plastic inside there for bending the photo etch you might be able to see it right now but there is a little uh, little latch on the back or handle excuse me on the back of the uh, searchlight on the not the driver's uh, cupola but on the uh, loader's cupola 
and some other little photo etch pieces here and there. So very much have to commend uh, Ammo by Meg. They've created a wonderful kit and actually makes me want to do more 70 second scale stuff, especially because of the size. We can actually store a lot of it in our display cases now. So I'm going to have to be looking for some more of those in the near future. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more 4K videos coming. Well, there you go, guys. There is our first 4K model video build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope the sound and picture are all really good on that. Also want to give you guys a reminder, August 17th, 2019, next month, I will be making an appearance in Europe. So I get to visit with all my great European followers. I will be at Summerfest at Model Bau Koenig in Delmenhurst, Germany. It's in northern part of Germany. I'm very excited to come and meet as many of you guys as possible. It's a big open house model show slash sale. All kinds of cool stuff going on. Very excited about it. I'm going to give you the web address down below so you can go check it out. If you live in Europe, I'd be thrilled and honored to meet as many of you guys as I possibly can. Very excited about this trip. Uh, I know lots of you guys come over and visit me, but now I'm going to go over there and see how many we can visit over there. So very excited about it. So check out the link down below and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.